On this episode of China Uncensored, very serious, complex political issues. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. China has for the first time officially announced the investigation of former Chinese security czar Zhou Yangkong. This amounts to the climax of a long, drawn-out political battle between Chinese leader Xi Jinping and... You know what? Screw it. It's summer! Let's watch some movies! Well, let's see what we got here. Huh. Well, that's weird. Everything seems to be about the Japanese invasion of China in World War II. Second Sino-Japanese War is what they call it. So I bet these are heartfelt, sobering movies like Saving Private Ryan, Letters from Iwo Jima, Schindler's List. Stories of human suffering and triumph over adversity, handled tastefully and respectfully. Let's try this one. Whoa, did that guy just throw a grenade at a plane? Uh, okay, maybe let's try something else. No way, she's not gonna shoot down a plane, is she? Oh, that's way more reasonable. Let's try again. Okay. So, in case you couldn't tell, China really does not like Japan. A lot of it has to do with Japan's brutal occupation of the country that resulted in the deaths of 20 million Chinese. In one particularly awful incident, the Rape of Nanking, somewhere between 40,000 to 300,000 civilians were killed and 20,000 women were raped. The Chinese regime wants to keep that hate alive because, well, if everyone hates the Japanese, maybe they won't think too much about the fact that their own government has killed and tortured way more Chinese people than the Japanese ever did. And that's led to some pretty unique interpretations of the events of World War II. 30% of Chinese primetime TV consists of Japanese soldiers being, as Court says, implausibly slaughtered. In 2012 alone, there were 200 anti-Japanese movies made. And in these movies, strange things happen, like Naked girls saluting PLA troops. Kung Fu masters ripping Japanese soldiers in half with their bare hands. A World War II that looks suspiciously like the Matrix. And more Kung Fu masters apparently dodging bullets and rescuing rabbits. And who could forget the delightful little soldier Zhang, which the director said was inspired by Disney movies. It's about a young boy left all alone after his grandmother dies from being shot in the back by the Japanese. Her death spurs little Zhang on the road to join the Red Army, where he helps him blow up a trainload of Japanese soldiers, earning him the magical wish of every child, a pistol to kill more Japanese. That's basically what happened in Finding Nemo, right? But you gotta draw a line somewhere with these movies. I mean, they can't be too ridiculous, right? Like the movie Devils at the Doorstep, that movie was banned for going way beyond the bounds of good taste. One of the Japanese soldiers in it was actually nice to Chinese villagers. Totally historically inaccurate. The Japanese are 100% evil. Fortunately, that's led to a booming business for extras playing the roles of the much maligned Japanese devils, as they're called. The Yangcheng Evening News estimated that in 2012, a billion fictional Japanese soldiers were slain. Shi Zhongpeng is an extra who says he died over 200 times that year, once 31 times in a single battle. How does he keep getting the gig? His secret, he says, is to act as lewd and abominable as possible when playing a Japanese character. I guess he's dying to make a living. Of course, you can only spend so much of your time watching TV and movies. That's why anti-Japanese propaganda is everywhere. Your department store looking to sell more clothes? Obviously, war reenactments are the ticket. 
Or you could go to the 8th Route Army Culture Park, where you can roleplay the war, shoot at Japanese targets, watch performances, or just enjoy some good old Japanese killing action. Did I mention the Japanese are evil? Now obviously there's potential for Japanese tourists being offended. That's why you put up signs telling them where they can't go. But it's important to teach the Chinese people from an early age that they should hate the Japanese. So when elementary school kids aren't being forced to do wartime reenactments, they're learning reading, writing, and the education in national humiliation. That's where they learn all about the terrible things Japan did to China in the 30s that they'd still be doing today if they had half a chance. It's got to be a fun day for the kiddies when the field trip to the anti-Japanese war museum in Beijing rolls around. That's when young children get to look at grainy photos of women getting raped and disemboweled. And of course, stacks and stacks of the corpses of children. So, I know when I was in elementary school, they had us go to the Museum of Tolerance where we learned about the Holocaust. A few differences. One, the more graphic images, they didn't let us go into that part of the museum. Also, you didn't walk away from it with the lesson that Germans are all evil. It was slightly more nuanced, more about the need to tolerate the differences in others and the capacity for horror that human beings are capable of when they don't. Oh, and you know another difference? They don't sell pornography at the Museum of Tolerance. Guess what they have at the Nanking Massacre Memorial Museum? Pornography. Rape-themed pornography at a place that condemns the rape of 20,000 women. Ow.